in very quickly because we are on Facebook Live now. We started our show already. This is What's the Story with Maria. My special guests tonight are Greg Schlotthauer sitting next to me and Michael Leon Woolley. They are both bi-coastal guys. Um, right now, the, uh, Michael's living in L.A., right? And uh, you'll hear all the lights are coming up. Him. And Greg has lived in New York, and still you still have a place here. I've lived, I've lived on in the cradle of civilization, which is 23rd Street and 7th Avenue in Manhattan for 25 years. Okay. Right? But I spend a third of my time in Los Angeles. Too. A third of your time. So now, when you go there, is it just like your work? Michael's work is the type of work that he. Michael, you get like pretty steady stuff, right? Yeah, I like mean, my, my most of my work is yeah. All right, so tell us. Seven percent of it is now in Los Angeles. Okay, ninety. And your work is everywhere, right? Right, like you my travel work, a lot. My work is in is in New York and California and New Mexico and on and a couple cruise ships, maybe for not hopefully not more than two months of a year. Okay, so let's take a second. It's like a one. prison. Well, it's a, that's what a lot of cruise ships people say the same it's like thing. It's a palatial oh. floating prison. All right, so, so let me see who has checked in with us. Terry Sweeney joined. Michael Sawyer joined. Hello, Jill Anderson. Uh, hi, Jill. Jill is my friend from Morristown. Jay, Jay Rivera, Hector Garcia, hi, Shep Pamplin. Remember Shep Pamplin? Um, uh, Joe uh, Savino, very handsome. Joe Savino is very handsome. Stephen Elbel. Hi, Stephen, and congratulations, Stephen. And. Um, Jeffrey Campbell, 32 years. I, uh, Kimberly Travis. Hey, Kimberly, you know I'm a Red Sox fan, but your Yankees knocked it out of the park last night. So shout out to Yankee fans because these guys were hanging on and uh, they had quite a game. Elena Bennett has joined us. Rory Taggart. You guys remember Rory? Rory. Rory's in Canada. He comes on every week. Charles Caselli. Hi, Charles. Very cute. So we have our, our regulars have joined us. Okay, so let's start. With, uh, with Michael. Michael, you, you're, when I first met you, you were a singer, you were on Broadway, yeah. you had done several Broadway shows. What are some of the Broadway shows that you, that you, that my, you have under your belt? <laughs> my first one was um, Five Guys Named Mo. Uh, Five Guys Named Mo. And I did, well before that I did a few national tours. And actually, my first job was the national tour of Pearly the Musical. Pearly, right. I don't know of yeah, Pearly the Musical. Yeah, it's a great musical, Melba Moore. Um, oh, really? And uh, I uh, make 300 bucks a week. Wow. Traveling the what year was that? We don't talk to you. No, okay, we okay. So, but it was, no, a, it was, it was a way back. Yeah. Oh my gosh, way back, that's, ago. okay. Yeah. And um, I toured, I did, uh, I toured Little Shop, actually. Um, I think I did like six national tours. I did The Wiz and Five Guys Named Mo. Wow. Um, but I, Five Guys, first I did on Broadway. Then did The Music Man on Broadway. Um, I remember, I saw you in the yeah. Music Man. I American saw, Buffalo. I didn't see no, American Buffalo. Horrible. Horrible. Really? Horrible. You didn't miss it. <laughs> all right. All right. I don't feel bad. Oh my God, all right. So if you guys did, didn't see American Buffalo, it was, nice. but I saw you in Little Shop of Horrors on Broadway. You yeah. were, tell us who you were. Uh, I was the voice of Audrey to feed me. He was the plant. He was the voice <laughs> was of the plant. He might have been the plant. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. He was amazing. And then, Michael, I remember one night you came into the club that I worked at and you said, I got, you were like almost dazed. You looked dazed. You said, I got a Disney thing. <laughs> I'm doing a Disney animated movie. Yeah. And, and, and when I saw you and how humbled you were by it and excited at the same time, I knew you were on the cusp of something gigantic. Uh, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, did, did your life change after that? Oh yeah, immensely changed my life. Um, and the funny thing is, um, it was it's Louis the Alligator. I play Louis okay, the Alligator. Okay, so we got to talk about this because if you have kids, they're gonna scream right now. <laughs> Michael Leon Woolley, my friend, was the voice of Louis the Alligator in The Princess and the Frog, the oh, Disney animated wow. Princess and the Frog. So I got to tell you, one time, this is so cute. I was out with Judy, and her daughter was like eight at the time. And there was a bunch of little girls sitting at a table with their mommies. And I said, guess what? I literally name dropped to these eight-year-olds. I know Louis the Alligator. Because one of them was coloring a book, a coloring book, and it was The Princess and the Frog. And I said to her, I know that guy. She said, what? I said, I know the alligator. She said, no, you don't. I said, I could call him right now. And you know what I did? I dialed Michael. And I said, may I speak to Louis the Alligator, please? And he totally went for it. He goes, 
just a minute, let me get him. And then he came on and I put it up to this little girl. She was like four and she was like, she literally dropped the phone. She went, oh, and she was gasping. And she started to cry because she was so excited that Louis the Alligator was on the phone. How cute is that? Yeah, it's great. You know, the best, um, the best time for me that someone that recognized, recognized me, well, they recognized my voice. I was at a diner in uh, Jersey, like deep in Jersey. And I was <laughs> deep in, deep Jer in Jersey. The deep like, south of Jersey, going to a like film. Or <laughs> yeah. We know and, we got uh, it. <laughs> I was sitting there with a friend, and uh, the movie had just come out. And uh, we're talking, and this couple comes up, these two guys. And one is very shy, and, but the other goes, um, excuse me, um, uh, excuse me, are you the voice of Louis the Alligator? The <laughs> I can't the believe you got it. And I was like, uh, yeah. Um, wow, and that's like, good. We heard you laughing, and we could tell it was. Well, like, you yeah, got a big laugh. You know, yeah. and you have a very distinctive voice. And I was, yeah, I was really touched. I was like, wow, yes, I am. And matter of fact, he turns to my friend and goes, I'm sorry, I'm sure this happens all the time. And my friend's like, yeah, happens yeah. everywhere we go. But uh, How as, cool. they were, as they were leaving, the one who was really quiet turns to me and says, um, you know, it was a really hard holiday season for us this year, and your movie really helped us get through. Oh, wow. And, uh, what a great story. It was one of my story. favorite moments in my career with, like, Isn't Alabama. that something? Um, you know, if they had told me that before they had paid the check, I probably would have picked it up. <laughs> uh, see, that's but a nice, that's, that's nice. That's a diner, though. Well, you've been very generous <laughs> to people. I, I know firsthand how generous you are. And uh, so thank you for all your generosity, because you're one of those guys that, you know, does that a lot and I appreciate it. And also like, if you call it like my dad is crazy about Michael. Like when my dad comes to town, we went out with Michael, we went to a jazz club when, um, Michael. what was that club that we love that it closed just recently? The Garage, oh, it's an amazing gosh. jazz club oh, yeah. on 7th Avenue down uh, in the village. And my, so me and Michael and my dad went, my dad literally is half of Michael's size. <laughs> Because my dad's a little short of time. He though. loves jazz. He, he loves, loves jazz, jazz and yeah. he loves you. And he loves Norm Lewis. I took him to see Norm on Broadway. Um, okay, so uh, now you are living in LA and you're doing a lot of a lot of cartoons, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. Kind What's of that what other one you do? The Voice of the Devil and America, or the Americans? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was called Ugly Americans. The Ugly Americans. Um, bone. Oh, well, give us a little, give us a line, Michael. Give us some. Ah, what did it sound? What did he sound like? You know, he's like. How how would he say? <laughs> how would he say? Uh, welcome to what's the story with Maria? <laughs> he was an evil boss. He had a yeah, horn sticking. Oh, I his love head. it. Say it. Um, welcome. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Just say welcome to what's the story with Maria. I don't know. Maria. Welcome to. <laughs> and I put him welcome on the spot. The welcome to yes. yes. Well, well, anyway, <laughs> thank you. And Louis the alligator is very cute. So if you. If you haven't seen the movie, which I doubt, uh, but even if you're in, you don't have kids, you know you don't need a kid to watch a Disney movie. Watch <laughs> the Princess and the Frog, which I actually love. It's it's based in New Orleans, right? Yes. Yes, yes. and oh, he wow. plays an alligator that sings and just adorable, yeah. adorable. So, um, all right, we're gonna go back and forth. So now I want to talk to Greg. So now, Michael, you are there. You are living in LA, and you said you're gonna you're gonna be. Uh, buying something yeah. rather than renting, right? Because that's yeah, how permanent soon, yeah. you are. Okay. We're adults now. I know. We're big kids yeah. now. Yeah, we got to buy some property. Yeah, so. eventually. Yeah, I guess you have to, right? My dad is on me about it. Yeah, that's well, dads do that. That's what dads are all about. Let's take a second before we move over to Greg and say, have some more shout outs. Mike Kerrigan. Oh, Hi, Mike. Crazy. Mike is, uh, is in uh, Massachusetts. I love Mike Kerrigan. Paul Lucas. Hi, Paul Lucas. You remember five guys named Mo. Uh, in London, and the producer gave uh, the cast fried chicken every time they had a party. Oh, 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 my, oh my God. Oh, my God. Paul Lucas. Oh, my God. He was on the show. And they also gave Miss Saigon Chinese food. Oh, no. <laughs> what is it wrong? Well, I suppose they would give the Italians cannolis, but I'll take it. Oh, See, I just love Jersey food. boys is cannolis. Cannolis, yeah. So they go with that. Saigon No, it's not. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Tomorrow has joined us. Scott Ellis has joined us. Uh, Carol uh, Ercoli has joined us. Kelvin Moon, uh, Robbie Stamper. You Robbie. guys remember Robbie, Robbie. Stamper? Robbie. Robbie's Robbie. in Florida now, and he's a. Gr I won't say. He's, let's just say he has a granddaughter instead of saying he's a grandpa. Can you believe that? No. How could that be? Our Robbie Stamper has no. a beautiful little granddaughter. Um, okay, so it's Greg Schlotthauer. I love saying. That. 
<laughs> Tell us again what it meant, how, what the original was. Schlotzenheimer flower. Schlot, Schlotzenheimer flower. I, and what I, does that, that mean? I made it up. Did I, you? Schlotzenheimer flower. Doesn't that should be your one man show. Schlotzenheimer It's really pretty, flower. and it could be like a picture of you with yes. some kind of a flower. <laughs> you know, and the, your hair. Yes, and, the, <laughs> and it's all black and white, and the just. Maybe half. It's like you're, right. You know, you're transitioning into color. Look and how I'm now. I'm maybe transitioning into yes. something else. I love German, it. I take it. All right. German. So Bavaria. Bavaria. Speaking of transitioning, you are. Let me just say, I'm going to hold this up right now because I love to show name. off my friends. Okay, so this is how you spell Schlotthauer. It's on the bottom. It's on the top there. Schlot. Greg Schlotthauer. This that's, album. That's my first album. Is his from first album. X years ago. It's called Rings in Space, and I am Spaces. not. Oh, Rings in Spaces. Spaces. Now, I have to ask the picture. What is the picture of? That's a picture I took in old Havana in Cuba. In Cuba. Well, this yeah. is way before anybody was going to Cuba, though. Uh, I don't think it's changed very much. No, but I'm saying this it's... is before they started opening things up, and now they yeah, closed it them was, again. It was. Because yeah. of all that crazy stuff happening with the embassy, and you know about with that. People right? ear, people's ear aching. Holy mackerel. There's some, uh, let me tell you, you know, when we were kids and we would see like these futuristic shows and we'd be like, oh, all that stuff has already that's, happened. That's now they're going to have self-driving yeah. cars, I heard. You know what? What else? Just stop it. Just stop right. Everybody should stop right now. Let's all calm down. Let's yes, all calm the hell down. <laughs> all right. But uh, you just finished a new CD. I finished my new CD after working on it for five years. The first three years I worked in in Los Angeles with a producer named Paul Rossler. Okay. And it was a wonderful experience, and I got a lot of really wonderful help. Um, Petra Hayden and uh, Marcus Watkins and also China Forbes, some really wonderful talent that I found in Los Angeles. So are these singers or uh, musicians or? Um, China Forbes is a singer with a band named Pink Martini, and Marcus Watkins is a guitar player with, with a lot of people, and and uh, Cornelius Mims is a bass player, and he just won a Grammy. Yeah, I was going to say that name rings a bell. He's a fabulous bass player, and we now, just you, got these great musicians in L.A., and then I, after you I was... you find that there are better moving, musicians in L.A., or just different, or... I find are they, that... Are they transient as well? Are they, like... What's that's not the word transit. What's I think the word? That, I think that Los uh, transitory. Maybe. Transitory. Yeah, know. they go back and forth. I think that Los Angeles. Um, part of the, part of the mystique around Los Angeles was that it was created as the entertainment hub of the of the planet. So I think a lot of people in music go. You to mean LA. musically? Okay. Music. I think probably for music, people go to LA more than they. Do in New York. Okay, uh, you know I might have to. It's. A, I think it depends. Like, it was I, remarkable to find the, the the amount of talent that you could find in Los Angeles. And it's as small. far as musicians, now yeah. singers though, I tend to find that there like there's just like a, a plethora of singers in in New York, like everywhere. You, right, Michael? Yeah, I have a really specific take on singers. Between yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me. Jump in that, there. You know, when you say you're a singer. Or you can sing in New York. I think it implies that you know you're you good enough perform. to sing on Broadway and be on perform stage. Live. Yeah, right. But if you say you can sing in Los Angeles, it kind of means it means you're you know, working in a studio. Yes, yeah. or or yeah. that you you know give me a week and I can learn to sing a song. It's a lot and different. I, a lot different. I wonder. Singers. I wonder if that has something to do with with my take on Los Angeles. That that it's it's it was it's. There's nothing wrong with fabrication. There's nothing wrong with manufacturing things. But it seems like it's a culture that. Is somewhat fabricated and it's still beautiful and it's you still mean the sound that, that's created everything about Los Angeles, but in in the entertainment industry, it's there to create things and in in, in in as opposed to more performing things. Okay, Think that's very kind interesting. Of a, a live live entertainment capital could be could be New York, but where you create things in a studio and make. You know, productions and films and all these things. It's, yeah, the culture comes from Los Angeles. That, that it's it's, wow. it's 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 where people are. You know, well, that makes a lot of sense. Creating though. things as opposed to performing them. So it's really it, it's uh, it's not that one is better than the other. It's just that if you if you like this particular if you like if you appreciate it like a live jazz singer like a live jazz band. You're gonna get more of that in New York. I would. I think Either, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I think so. I would think so. Yeah. I think so. Like, I, I love it's that. It's more about, you know, honing your craft. Right, you know, right. You really train and work really hard. You know, I think there might be 
there's shortcuts nowadays for you know um, yeah a lot of people use new york i mean i love both places i really really love both places but i do think that new york is maybe a more uh rich and honest experience okay perhaps and, and now let los me angeles is more you know the, the creation of the arts let me t let me ask you this this in, is in the, in the creation of the startup when i went to yeah. i love california and you know we know judy loves it she just flew back today she was depressed already because she's mm -hmm. she loves it there and wants to move there eventually but i was there a few years ago we flew into san francisco and then drove down the pacific coast highway it was the most exquisite thing i've ever experienced yeah. visually and also spiritually like the, the ocean, that beautiful Pacific Ocean is on your right. Mm -hmm. the, the purple mountains, you know when you hear purple mountain mm -hmm. majesty? Now I know what they mean. Those purple mountains on yeah. your left, I couldn't believe how exquisite. I'd never seen anything so beautiful. What struck me though, that wor these are the things that worry me as a crazy, you know, I'm a, a little bit crazy in my head. Why I love it's New okay. York, yes, thank you. Me too. <clears throat> this is what I kept thinking. <laughs> The reason I like New York to live better is because I don't feel lonely here. And if I do Ooh. feel lonely, I can just get on the train and go somewhere and meet a bunch of friends. Mm. I never feel like I'm very far from being in touch with other humans. Like if I wanted to just walk out of my apartment now and go to a restaurant, it's two blocks away, and I'm, I'm going to strike up a conversation with people. Mm. Whereas in L.A., I felt like if I didn't know someone – how would I get to know someone unless I knew someone else? I, I felt that 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 cl clause of loneliness, because I can go there, just kind of gripped me. I was like, oh, yeah. what would I do here? Who would I, how would I make friends? You know, that kind of thing. I don't know. Do you feel I, that? I felt, I, I, I've been back in New York for two years now, and I believe that I was never happier and healthier than the three years that I lived in Los Angeles. Okay. And, but I, I always had this sense of, since I'm kind of inherently a loner, then New York was a healthier place for me because mm. you're forced to be around people. You, if, if you feel lonely, you walk out into the street at three in the morning and the, and the, the, del the deli is open and you can yep. talk with people. Everything's But in hours. Los Angeles, when I made social contacts, it seemed like people had more space and time to actually socialize. Wow, that's So I also felt like I was connected in, in a different way with people. You know, right, I had right. more more quality, quality contact with with people and i it, and, and it almost felt easier to make friends there because people were more relaxed oh that's but i want to be in new york because it's nuttier <laughs> and it just feels like it's i know a, that's it's how a, i feel I, like I feel like i'm running at this speed yeah and like, new york I'm is running at the speed and, and all of a sudden wheel. we're like perfect yeah. together yeah. we're a perfect match whereas we're, when i'm at in other places i feel like i'm running too fast yeah. and people are watching and saying take it easy relax yeah, people think i'm crazy because i you know I run pretty but hard. You have a, run, some community down there, though, there. Michael. Yeah, I, do I mean, you have an people. amazing community down but, uh, there. But uh, funny enough, though, most of my friends in Los Angeles are New York people. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Uh, wow, that's interesting. I met a bunch of friends. They were so nice. Yeah. I met a few people in Los Angeles that had open hostility toward New York, and I didn't. Oh, really, in what way do you mean yeah. that? Uh, they. Uh, people in online dating specify that they didn't want to date somebody from New York. <laughs> really? And I, that is correct. Yeah. And, and, that and is. I've never, I never <laughs> felt the opposite from from people in New York. I didn't feel like people really disliked. Well, they like they disliked Los Angeles, but they didn't say, you know, that it was a. a, a they wouldn't date someone from Los yeah, Angeles. Yeah, they, they didn't go that far. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. All right. So now um, you are working. So, so I fin anyway. So I finished my. My CD that I, I've been working on for five years, and I finished it this time. afternoon. I know, this afternoon. because you're the kind of guy that I also produces your own. And, yeah. You write your own songs, but you also yeah. go in the studio and produce it. Is yeah. that correct? I, I, I did. A, I wrote and hired, and yeah, it's I'm a controlled person. Now, I want to give a shout-out to Greg as well, because on my second album, uh, both my albums, if you go to my website, mariagentilly.com, you can download them or download one or two songs or whatever you like. The song that's played, when you listen to Spreaker and you listen to podcasts, I'm a big fish in a small pond. Greg and I wrote that together. And uh, it's one of my favorite songs. And when they were asking, you know, when uh, Joe and um, Jimmy were like, well, we need a song for your show. So that was a song I chose because uh, it says I'm as famous as I want to be. Uh, and Greg and I wrote that together. So the voice that you hear other than mine on there is Greg. Also, what Greg does when you work with Greg. That's probably me doing that. Yeah, that's you. Or maybe. Those are the ah, uh, let me hear that up. That's you. 
Um, so another thing you do that I love is you will write an arrangement that is so rich for a bass, for a cello, for a, you also did the arrangement. I, uh, my mother in the Red Sox, I wrote that myself, but then I, I said, Greg, can you write me a, a bass part? Can you write me a cello part? Sure. And he, then he played the piano on it. It was just beautiful. Thank you. So Greg is on that song and Greg and I wrote, um, Big Fish Small Pond on my, my second album. So go and listen to that. Oh, go to iTunes or Spotify. You can listen to that. But I prefer you go to my website. If whatever, do what you want to do. But that's what I'm, that's gonna make me happy. Okay, let's do a little more shout out to our buddies. Lindsay Stillinger, she is my friend from high school, and she lives in Colorado now. Millie Aquila uh, Aguilar, and she's out in uh, Coney Island. She and her girlfriend Jen save dogs. You have never seen anything like they it. do. Yes, like really cute dogs. Les Hopkins. He's my friend. He's a British guy. We love him. Shannon Molly Flynn. Hello, Shannon Molly Flynn. So um, feel free to share our um, our video right now. You can share it as uh, as we're doing it. Okay. So now, uh, Michael, do you? I, I'm sure it's different, and you like both. But do you pref prefer a live performance? Because you sing. You were also. I also want to say he was. Um, Tiny Joe Jackson. Dixon. Dixon. I always say Jackson. Tiny Joe. I always say every single time I screw it up. Tiny Joe Dixon yeah. in uh, the Dream Girls movie with Beyonce um, and all of those girls. Did you get to meet Beyonce? Yes. 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 He, he plays. Was she nice in person? Oh, she was great and beautiful. Yeah. And she, yeah, I'm sure she's gorgeous. Pretty. So she, oh, Tiny yeah. Joe Dixon. So if you watch um, with the beginning of the movie of the Dream Girls, where they were all uh, at, is it the Apollo that they were at or so, yeah. somewhere like that? And they were all like auditioning and uh, Tiny Joe, he plays guitar and he sings and that's Michael. So you'll see him. He's amazing. Michael's in a, I know he does voiceovers and stuff, but he's an incredible singer. The ah. big, boomy, beautiful, wow. deep, rich, gorgeous voice. I'm not going to say I'm an amazing singer. I'm going to say it. Well, Can I say it? Too. It too, so. Oh, I saw that a little bit. You know what? And just for half a minute, I thought, yeah, Mike was really changed. Fake news. Mike, Mike, <laughs> fake news. Fake news. The fail, wait, the failing news. I love that. The the failing news. Times. Just keep saying it in and out. Oh, my God. And then, oh, my God. Whatever. The failing, right. Well, the failing New York Times apparently really likes you. And I get the failing New York Times delivered, home delivery every day. I love the New York, I Times. Love the New York Times, too. Um, and so does Rizzo. Rizzo reads it as well. Um, okay, so. Rizzo the dog. She is a dog. Um, you, you know what, Greg? Who was it that said I look like Linda Richmond with these glasses on? <laughs> in Coffee Talk, Linda Richmond and Coffee Barbara. Talk, they're like butter. Barbara is like butter. Like butter. So, uh, uh, all right. So, Michael, I mean, uh, what do you, what do you get? I know you love the voiceovers, and the voiceovers have really yeah. kind of more more pay the rent on a steady basis, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, have, that is your craft. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I do now. That's voiceover. your trade. I am a, yep, Don't I'm you a, have various crafts? Um, that is the one that pays my bills. That's, <laughs> that's, the, biggest, that's yeah. the biggest Yeah, and it's split between promos. Like, I'm the voice of a network, um, the Fox Movie Channel, FXM, Tuesdays oh. at 8, 5 Pacific. Wow. I All love that it. Stuff. That's sexy. And, uh, and I'm now, so I should, you know, my, my page don't kill me, but I don't care. I'm the voice of uh, AMC Movie Theaters. When you go, you'll hear. You are? Um, yeah, do something. Yeah, do something, uh, Michael. Wow. Do it. Say, um, what do you say? Turn your cell phones off. Welcome to AMC. Wow. You know, and. Uh, That's you? Yeah, now it is. Wow. I love it. Am I eating my popcorn too loud? <laughs> no, but just make but sure you turn, turn your cell phone off and, and look for the nearest exit. Why, wow. are the why are the previews so much louder than the movie? Is that because to, to, to make I'll them, tell you why. I know the them, I know the answer to this. To keep you awake. No, when you Jeez. watch the people that do commercial, I mean people that are buying spots, uh, whether it's a movie, are paying good money for that. To so force you to listen. You no, know, what they want to do is they want to snap you awake and get your attention, and uh, sub subconsciously it registers, and you or you'll see a coke bottle and you think I need a bottle, I need some coke. I need some popcorn. I need some because it got your attention. Whereas the trailer, I mean, the regular movie is at a steady level. It wants to zen you in and get you, but the the, the sponsor wants to wake you up. That's what it's about. Any commercial on television, movies is always louder. Always. That well, is intentional. That. No, I know that because I, I've done a few commercials. Well, I just felt so offended day. that it was so. You uh, were personally offended. I was Greg? personally. I, I'm out of here. 
Yeah, that's well, it. I just felt like, why do they have to attack me sonically? Well, do you why feel you were personally attacked? That's the thing. I don't you know, think they were I mean, trying I, to... I, can't, I was on time. Why are you punishing me with such painful volume? But you're also a guy that wear, I've seen you wear earplugs when you play. <laughs> I love it. As a singer, I don't know how to take no. that. That was a touchy That was a touchy thing in, in, a, in a piano bar when people would come up. And, just let me put my earplugs in I real quick. That's what he would you... do. I love it. Though. Oh, I always before, someone it. Sings, before someone sings, he would that. put earplugs in. <laughs> Some, some people sing louder than Rachel, others. That's yeah, true. That's and some, some people, people sing, sing better, better, than than others. Others. better than others. Some people yeah. have a different relationship with pitch. Okay, oh, my God. All right. A distant, a distant relationship. A distant relationship. So yes. listen, speaking of sound, now what I want to play here is I'm going to play a couple clips. This is, this is the it's, name of my... That's a, his old album. On iTunes, you'll be able to get this song in maybe three weeks. S C H O O T. Oh no, but that's not. And this is the old this album, is how, right? This is how you spell my okay, name. Okay, so this is just, just spell it for the radio people. Spell your name. S C H L O T T H A U E R. Okay. Sorry about the. No, but this is gonna, So Greg Schlotthauer. Right. You're gonna go to iTunes and listen. So I'm gonna play three different song clips, because what the reason I chose these three different ones is because I want to show his different styles. So the first one, Greg, we're going to play. Versatile. You are versatile, and that's a good thing in this sound. All right, so this is clip four. All right, hold on a second. Stop it right now, both of you. Behave yourself. All right. This, this is called Love Song in the Third World. It's about being in love with the wrong guy. Oh, I love it. So there's a piano in there. There's a guitar in there. This is simple, though. Petra Hayden, Petra Hayden is singing in this. I know you know the right things to say and what to do. So Thanks. I love your voice. I love it. I know you see a brighter light in the day. That's the only lyric I'm proud of. I know you see a dimmer light in a brighter. I know you see a brighter light in a dimmer view. Love this. All right. Now I hate to afford it. I'm gonna go ahead. All right. This is five. Now we'll, at some point in time we can play all the more. I can give them to Joe. Ryan. Now this is completely different. This is like a this is head banging music, right? This, this this is about deciding to lose your mind in Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy, which happened here? Hurricane. There's a hurricane coming at my rock and roll. And you wrote and produced all of these, right? Yeah. Yeah, how many ten, instruments? There are ten songs. But how many instruments in this? Oh, God. There's a lot. There's a harp, there's a violin, there's a, guitar, there's a lot. Yeah. All right, and now we're going to flip ahead because I want to show you one more style. This is why I love Greg. Listen to this. Completely different. Is this cool or what? Listen to that guitar. Woo! Look out. This is also about insanity. Well, you write very well about insanity. <laughs> you really know. I'm serious. You write what you know. Right. And I know that. I love it. What's this about? This about the devil, you said? This is when the, the devil's telling you that you're in love, and the devil's telling you that you're not in love. Oh. And there's no, you, it's, 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 you're, you're, un, you're not in control. Oh, I love that. How cool is this? Oh, she's great. That's my, that's my inner black woman telling me, telling me that I'm not in love. Oh, see? All right. Oh, I love it. All right, so we just want to give you a few clips of that, but now, if, oh, her. my the, God, the, I the love your music. The album's going to be called Don't You Want to Be Forgotten. Don't, don't You Want to Be Forgotten? Don't That's You Want to cool. Be Forgotten and, by Greg Schlott. And what, what is that? Tell me what, what, what that comes from. Uh, the title track is, well, the, the basically the title track is kind of, um, well, it's not called Don't You Want to Be Forgotten, but that's a, that's a phrase from from a song called Love Song in the First World, which is a rock song. And it's about celebrating that we are lucky to be living in the first world, but also have a, having a, 
a sense of responsibility to care for the entire world. Oh, I love that. And don't you want to be forgotten is kind of talking about how it's a tendency as human beings to try to make a mark in the world. And, and I wanted to play with the opposite extreme of thinking, wouldn't it be nice to think of all of us as accepting that when we die, we just wash into the water and we're, oh, we beautiful. live a beautiful and respectful life and, and we're forgotten. And it's, a, okay. it's actually a good thing. This is exactly why, first of all, the, the other, this, this album is coming out soon. But in the meantime, do yourself a favor. This album right here, which I love, uh, Rings in Space. Spaces. Spaces. I always say space. Rings in Spaces. Is you must go to iTunes right now or go to Spotify. I actually don't think you must. I would no, say... I'm telling you to. I'm telling you right now. If you don't do it, I'll be really pissed. Do you understand me? I don't think you want Maria Gentili. No, you don't want it. I, I'm up in menopause and I'm Italian. And oh, I'll... For Please, stop it. Just go and... Uh, this is really good. It's Thank my you. top three favorite albums of all time. You think I'm joking? Uh, it, it's up there with uh, it was Songs Wonders, in the Key of Life. Turn, yes, and the my number one. Album and my album's well, third. Purple yeah. Rain. Purple Rain. Is, Purple is that this. Purple oh Rain? My God. You know what? Purple Rain is Prince is... is well, we can I say Prince. something terrible? No. Is it really going to swear? I'm the biggest Prince fan. I know you are. You Purple Vincent. Rain is the... Is, is the Not your favorite? Is the least good one. Now, let's talk about Prince for a second because you have been... Prince is Prince's, five foot one. Yeah, you've been to his. Uh, you've gone to the complex, right? Uh, I, I, I was, I, I was so moved when Prince died. I finally visited Minneapolis on his birthday, six weeks after his death, and it was. And there was a lot of people there. Minneapolis right? is. They call it the Minneapolis because the Minneapolis, it's the it? Minneapolis. The Minneapolis because it's really? like New York, except it's a little smaller. I didn't ever know. It's that. incredible. People are. Mary very... Tyler Moore was there. Remember, she was. You're you gonna turn it... make it after. You can turn the world the on with a smile. You could take a nothing day. And suddenly and make it all be all right. Well, it's, it's you, girl, girl and you, you should know, know it. it. That's right. Each list and every little movelet. Now we know. Every little movelet. I loved Rhoda. Rhoda was my girl. I loved Rhoda. Mary was nice, but she was too vanilla but many, for me. Apples I liked Rhoda. She had an edge. is an incredible place. All right. Uh, that's, I'll put it on my list. And, and where the... Well, someone happened? is trying to get a hold of me. Wow. All right. Someone blowing up my phone. All right. Um, so, Michael, now... Um, no, no. This is great. We have so much to talk about. And we're going to... Uh, and then we have to talk about food too. But, oh. uh, so Michael, now if people want to, you have recorded stuff too, right? Are you on cast mm -hmm. albums? Yeah, I have, have you cast albums. Which cast albums of, are you uh, on? Yeah, of, um, Little Shop, you're, the, you're Little on that. Shop, so the original man. Broadway. Yeah. Um, Michael I, Leon Woolley is his name. You have to look for the Leon. Um, Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Dream Frogs. Girls. That dream Girls. Like I'm on. You're so, in the Green, you're on the Dream Girls. Yes. Yeah, the song, Take what is a Long it? Way Home. Taking the long way home. I think it's like song number three or something, yes, right? You sing right. the song? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm I, he's I a big know. deal, and he plays the guitar, <laughs> and he's really cool. He's like, oh, I he does a slide and everything. He's sexy. Thing. He's sexy. How, how, how tall are you? Uh, about six four. Yeah, he's oh, pretty big. Just god. stand up for a second, just to give us something. <laughs> he's I'll a big guy. I'm standing at the end. That's it. Uh, which I uh, always throws me. I always forget you have a trim brother. Yeah. But you're the better looking. I right? look fraternal. I am the pretty one. <laughs> yeah. And he's very shy, by the way. Is he? He's really shy. So I you got all the... He lives in Maryland. And, and, uh, and uh, he has kids, too? Yeah, he has a little niece. Oh, how cute. My niece, Victoria. Oh, that's so and, sweet. Uh, it's but name. it's funny that he is... Um, we're very different, except for one thing, that he is a computer programmer. And is a... He is as good on a computer keyboard as I am on a piano keyboard. Oh, Are you really? a piano player? Yes. He was a piano yeah. player before he was anything. Yeah. I learned this yeah. after I knew him for 20 years. Yeah, I right? really? a pianist. Um, no. so that crazy? When I was five years old, yeah. You should have played something when I met you when, at, at the Well, piano. I have a piano no, here. You know, Karen you. Miller used to, you know, she knew I would, could play, and she would like, sit down and play and sing a song. Wow. And, so she could go to and I never knew you that way. Yeah. I only knew you, were, not only, but I knew you yeah. was this great singer. But I Now, Michael, did you, did you, were you the kind of kid that learned to play in church and that kind of thing? No, I was, you know. You hear I that was, so um, much. I was born a poor black child. I, no, I was uh, not, but I started yeah. singing in church as a poor did. Italian I kid at folk mass. I actually started studying classically when I was five years old. My parents bought me a piano, and I 
had a teacher, and um, that's how we started. Wow. And then, um, funny enough, uh, my friend in high school turned me on to the 145 chords of jazz and blues. Wow. Dan Cassidy. And get this, Dan had this friend who was an amazing singer, his sister. Yeah. And um, mm. she was an amazing singer. She passed away far too soon, but her name was Eva Cassidy. No, wow. we the Eva Cassidy? High school, yeah. Oh, my but God. She was an amazing singer back then. She was amazing. She's got a so nice voice. soulful and so, everything. so. You, you turned me on to her. her. Oh, he yeah. turned me, you she's, turned me on to her. Yeah, she This was, is in the late 90s. She's still 90s. a mentor to me. I listen to her and I learned, you know. Oh, Eva yeah. Cassidy. If you don't know of Eva oh, Cassidy. You know, she has a version know. of Songbird, I heard. That oh, oh, my God. So many. Somewhere over the rainbow. So, yeah, but rainbow. you know what I like? Which yeah. People, That's people, a song people, 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 dreams. Wait, wait. Feel there's the a train a yes. uh, What's that I mean, song? I mean, people know. get ready. People get ready. The train coming. coming. Does she write? Um, she, was, she wrote a few she things. She wrote a few, but she covered. She can cover a lot, and she would do bl very bluesy <laughs> versions of things you've heard before, like "Time After Time" or mm. or "True Colors," or something like that. But uh, somewhere over the rainbow, yeah. uh, she does a version of some that's Darius rainbow. loves, oh, loves that, that version. Ever loves that. It is beautiful. Mm. I love Eva Cassidy or Fields of Gold. Oh my God, mm. she takes a uh, a Prince song and and remakes it, and you just yeah, it's, sting. It's be sting. Yeah. and it's beautiful. Mm, it's beautiful. I heard it was beautiful. Yeah, Eva Cassidy. You know, I'm going to tell you, speaking of um, Mary Tyler Moore, I used to say, when I got to Los Angeles. <laughs> when you got to Los Angeles, I was did like, you feel like Mary Tyler Moore? No, I arrived like, you know, I was throwing my head up in the air and spinning around like, I'm here. And, uh, and uh, Los Angeles <laughs> what happened? was like, and, and you know, who cares? Los Angeles, that's a tough place. Bro. Yeah. But New York is too. Mm. I, I tell people, um, all the time that <laughs> when do you even start in LA though like I I know like in, in New York like you want to start as a singer you go to the clubs you go to the piano bars you go to the jazz clubs you go to the open mics you take a few classes it, the culture is really hard in Los Angeles because you it's 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 you have, you have to know people you have to meet people it's yes. it's, it's it's like institutionalized schmoozing well, okay, like, was the, do they you really know, mean what they say about you go to parties and that's where you get, you meet people? Hell yes. Yeah? You have Michael? people, I think um, so. Yeah, I mean, I had to do a lot. And it's of, not bad, it's not bad, it's just that's how, that's how, that's how it's done. Is. Well, yeah. because you, you have to drive everywhere. How else would you do it? It's not well, like you meet people on the subway or in, you have to drive everywhere. It takes a while to get in, you know, even, um, I, because I went there. And it's agents. also competitive because there's so much good talent. You yeah, have, they have yeah to, there is. Not everybody is a you know, is a genius identifier of talents, and you have to make Still some kind of know. protocol of how you weed people out. When I, I came out there, that. when I went out there for animation, God, it's hard. I though. had a, a movie under my belt and like two or three cartoons. You've done these things in New York. Yes, and wow. ninety eighty percent, ninety percent of animation is done in Los Angeles, and so my my VO agents, Atlas Talent, they're amazing. Wanted me to move out there. Agent. Yeah, and they, um, I said, okay, I'll go. And even with those credits, the first year was like, really? Ooh, I thought it was going to be. And you had a lot of credits when you went yeah, out. Yeah, and uh, you know, <laughs> the Broadway credits. It didn't matter. It's and, a whole. It's um, a but whole I say, it's, it's the same thing in New York. But they love you out there, Michael. They love they you. Do now, but I had to work too. It was hard. I had to work to get in there. Yeah, it was two years before I kind of got in the door. And, yeah. Um, no, I'm in. I'm Good in. for you, honey. I know a studio yeah. singer. There I know Marty Thomas, years. our friend Marty Thomas, um, amazing singer. Oh, my God. Marty, you've got to come on the show. I know we've talked about it. But uh, he was just in L.A. recently, and he loved it. He loved it. And you don't always hear that. I, I think most people go out, like I said, they like it the first week, and then like, oh, I don't know about this. Oh, I think, I, think, I think Los Angeles and New York are two different planets, and Los Angeles, the, the separate things that are incredibly good about Los Angeles are totally different than the ones about it. And I, I feel like I have a really good version, a good perception of Los Angeles because I rode a bike for three years all over Los Angeles County. I well, you I ride didn't. from here to Connecticut, wow. I and I, I'm not joking. But I, didn't, rides to Connecticut. I, I didn't, I didn't drive when I was there, and so I felt like I was really outside all the time. Yeah, I was, that's I was, I was part of the, a part of the environment instead of being in a car. Yeah. No wonder people have such a negative view if they're just stuck, yeah, if on, they're their, stuck on the four hundred five and they're, yeah, that's and they're, true. You know, now I asked you guys this earlier. What? And, and we'll go one at a time. Michael, when you're in L.A., what do you miss about New York? And when yeah, you're in New York, what do you miss cool about thing. L.A.? Well, I think I like what you said about, um, uh, you know, being around people. It's easier to be social. L.A. kind of rolls up 
it goes to bed around 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And that's a time in New York I would like to go out yeah. and meet friends for dinner. Right, or a right. Diner we have done that. Yes, yeah, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, meeting a group in a, in a diner. It was great. Um, I think the food is better in New York. In New York? I'll okay. tell you this. You know what's bad? And I, two things that are bad in Los Angeles. Chinese food and pizza. Mm. You know? All right. Okay, yeah. I can see that. Ooh. I can see that. It's bad. And then, oh, uh, and okay, and uh, Gray. You tell me what you... When I'm what, in New York, I really miss Los Angeles' beauty. I think it's the prettiest city in the world. I think I've been to most places in Western Europe and a couple places in Asia, and I think that Los Angeles is the prettiest place in the world. Well, it's just gorgeous. A lot of even people feel it, that way. Even though they even imported the gosh darn palm trees. It's, it's, it's manufactured, but it's gorgeous. Nothing looks like that. Yeah. The hills, the mountains, the water, the, the architecture beautiful. that's kind of... It's clean, it's new, it's just, it's, it's spacious, it's, it's, yeah. it's a physically stunning place. And I think people are more relaxed there. Yeah, a lot of There's people more say space. that. It's, yeah. it's just, it's, My friend Rue, is, she's bi-coastal. She go, she and, and the Mexicans, her husband do that. The Mexicans that. make that place. It's just, yeah. it's, it's, it's a Oh, well, life. let me tell you, it's the best Mexican food I've ever oh, yeah. had. Oh, yeah. Actually, oh, after yeah. I had Mexican food in, in California, South Los Angeles, and then I had it here, South I thought, this is it. I love it. I don't even know what this is. And if you love Mexican food, I w we were in Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. Santa Monica, I think, Santa Cruz. We, we stopped at all those places and had Mexican food. Oh, my God. It's just beautiful. Yes. It's so authentic and yeah. delicious I and will fresh. Say this, you know, yeah. I think the beautiful people are in Los Angeles, but the sexy people are in New York. Oh, what do you boy. mean by that? That's cool. I Say that. that um, you know, it's they're, they're, dirtier they're in New York. No, yeah. listen, it's no. It's dirtier there's in a sexy way? There's more pheromones in New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah like, you're I right. See, we're I mean, sweaty. Angeles, well, we're so close. Yeah. That's why yeah. we're on the subway sweating yeah. our I, tails off. I see somebody now, and I'm like, wow, That's they're funny. really beautiful. But in New York, I'm like, I would hit that. Oh, gosh. I would hit oh, that. My All right. Yeah. Okay. I like that. <laughs> I like it. We're getting true. sexy now. I, yeah. I miss the change of seasons big time. Uh, Do you? Oh, when, I, when I'm in Los Angeles, that... We're, we're, see, I would. That's what we're, I would. We're, we're, I, it's, it's about to turn. It's about to turn into fall in New York City, and it's it's. Beautiful. There's nothing more gorgeous no. than this. And Los Angeles has. I'll tell you, the only thing that's more seasons. gorgeous, like is hot and warm, it, Massachusetts fall or <laughs> Vermont. Ooh, but other than oh Canada. my god, Canada, um, that's Montreal, nice. right? Yeah, Montreal. <laughs> no, I feel like Celine Dion when I Celine, Celine Dion. They're gonna sing I know the world, <laughs> Celine. <laughs> I can't help it, Celine. You know, I, I am thinking about Kathy Griffin talking about her. Oh, my God. Yes. Anybody talking about oh, Celine cracks me up. I can't help the French accent. Always cracks me up. I can't mm. help it. It's just that that kind of like, flan, I, that's how we hear it in my brain. Flan, flan, flan. Oh, and you know what else? They don't talk in L.A. They if don't? Is, what do they do? You, you, they have peace. Do so they swear they if, have, you're in, if you cut they, them off? They, they peacefully drive. I is think that true? I think they're peacefully. Yeah, but the, the, you know, the, 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 the amount aggressive. of cars and traffic now has just grown to like. A crazy. Yeah, it's kind of tough getting But the public, ultimately, I think the public transportation is what was finally the, the final straw to say, oh, I can't do LA anymore. Yeah. Because, and I was starting to be concerned, am I not as compassionate as I thought I was? Because every train or bus I got on was just you know, the most desperate people. And it's it's hard to expose yourself to that when you're, you know. Yeah. Well, I will say, Los when, you're, Angeles, when you're just, when you're trying to, when, you, when you're just trying to live your life and it's, it's, people are seriously, it's a, it's a, it's an intensely desperate homeless population. Yeah. On Los Angeles is the, the, well, it's the homeless there. capital of the country. Yeah. And, and, uh, and San Francisco is probably close yeah, behind. The, yeah. the I was there. The mayor declared um, homelessness a state of emergency. I believe good. it. It's, but um, people go good. there. Okay. It's warm. You can you can exist yeah. outdoors. Here, if you're in New York and you're homeless or Boston, you're going to freeze to death. Right. I mean, now. I just, Nobody rides the public transportation if they in L.A. If they, well, I will say I was on the subway in L.A. the first time I got on. And. Um, some people started talking to the people right next to them. And I thought it was so weird. Mm -hmm. Really? Like, don't talk. You're not supposed to do that. You talk to people in your own little thing. Yeah. And don't talk to people. Yeah, you have boundaries, boundaries. I probably exaggerated a little bit. Now, listen, in this show, we have 10 minutes left. Oh. And I know flies by. It flies by. There, so I always you have want a. Do you want to see something? No, I'm not going to say it. Put the cameras over there. We'll... No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I like that you sing Evergreen. No, I don't do Evergreen. Those girly songs, I don't do those. How about firework? <laughs> What's that? I actually love firework, but I do it slow. I do it like oh, a ballad. You do? Yeah. And then you can hear every word. I love Katy Perry. I think she's great. Yes. 
She's fun. Is she? Yeah, she's fun. Listen, she's fun. And you can also use it in class because I teach and I can use that with my teenagers. You know, Katy Perry, it's clean lyrics. I don't ever have to worry. interesting expose on her in the New York Times. I I'll have to. Oh, today? No, it's probably about a week. All right, I'll, I'll look oh, back. You know who I was with, <coughs> with oh. Los An- in Los Angeles? Um, Lisa Loeb. Oh. And she said she used to come downtown. To- yeah, she used to come down to the yeah. club downtown. Yeah, she was at that club. Yeah. She, she used to go there all the time. She lived around the corner. Right. Lisa That's Loeb is right. cool. She's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, she, uh, she's really... She's a very nice person. There's a lot of nice. Fiona people. Apple's sister came into another club that was downtown. Oh really? yeah, yeah. The yeah. That I, I think that club started with an R. Oh, that was yeah. another one. Yeah. I remember Nicole a lot of clubs came in once to use the bathroom. Yes, really? she did, yeah. and so did Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Spears. Came in quick, used the bathroom, wow. and that's it. I know somebody who's higher power is Britney Spears. Is that true? <laughs> that's I, do. I would. You know who my higher power is? Um, my higher power is uh, Sandra Bullock. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I did some extra work once in some movie, and Samuel L. Jackson was, uh, and he came into the holding nice area. Man. We watched. Yeah, him, I, I never met him. We watched the Knicks game together. He's a little intense. Is he? Yeah. But he was very nice to me. Mm. He was very nice. We watched the basketball game together because I love sports. President Obama is a very good friend of mine. He's is he? Really- <laughs> right now with the name oh drop. Yes. We don't. We I, don't I don't believe you. I'd love to meet him. We have we you did. All right, let's talk about food. So tonight, I don't have my food display because I had it delivered tonight because it's in a bag because I, I was teaching today and I couldn't cook. That's it. But uh, Greg loves Malikona restaurant around the corner. And they Malikon. make Malikon. They make the most delicious. Not Malikon. Malikon. No, not Malikon with an R. Malikon, which is in Cuba, I think. But it's a Dominican restaurant. So, and they have, they have, uh, well, we got rotisserie chicken. <sighs> delicious. And some vegetables and salad and rice and beans and plants. In the little in the in the little containers of that spicy tea. Yes, it's like lime and cilantro and 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 what else? Fabuloso cleaner. You said it's fabuloso. (laughs) He said this stuff tastes like what did you say today? You texted tangy disinfectant. Tangy disinfectant, but it's still I don't know what the hell it is, but we put it on the chicken. It's good. It's really good. So we're gonna be eating that. Um, and Michael, you're a super healthy guy. I got you some grilled chicken and vegetables and salad. Right. So That's another thing. It's easier to be healthy. healthier in Los Angeles because there's hiking. Yeah. And hiking is great. And yeah. You, and, you go hiking? And, and the air is just so clean. clean. And it's, it's a clean. culture of kind of healthy. That's what Judy loves about it. But I feel this kale. I'm over kale. I'm like. Whatever. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a fan of kale. kale. Let's come. Thank you. Somebody finally said it. When was kale invented? Was it like five years ago? Was it invented or was it always around? And all of a sudden, somebody realized. I think some white people turned onto it. Yes, and oh, but listen, don't just blame the white people. Don't just blame the white people because you know Jay Z loves kale. Jay Z, that's your guy. He loves kale. He started. He opened some kale. I don't know. Somebody look it up. Wait, Somebody Google it. I don't have a kale taste good. I agree with you. I am not. You know what? I, I we'll kale. do with kale. Kale is, has so much uh, um, uh, iron, and we all need iron. So sometimes what I do, I have a juicer. I have a Jack William juicer. I'll take beets, kale, spinach, and then I'll throw like an apple and an orange in there, and I will juice that, and I'll drink that. That I can tolerate. Huh. But kale, I'm not a fan of. Although, if you want yeah, to make the Trina kale salad. The, kale ba- the bags of kale, you make a salad with it. It's I know. I, I'm not a fan. Yes. Judy loves it. You know what I do do, though, if I have to eat kale? I, I take a, a tangerine and I <laughs> squeeze it in. in. <laughs> but a little Tabasco. Tangerine, Put Tabasco. Like and then, like, maybe some almonds or some kind of nuts or something. Give it a little crunch. You know the best in Los Angeles? Zanku chicken. Oh! What's, what's, my what's that? Yeah, what is it? Tell Zanku's, me about it. Zanku is there's amazing. One in, there's one in, what is that? It's it's, it's an like Armenian, Armenian chicken. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like it's, it's otherworldly. It's like Mediterranean food here. I love they, it. It's so I don't know they what they this, do. This, this garlic <laughs> creamy. Oh, oh, God. You know what's, what else Russian. is good in Los Angeles? Tell me, tell me. It's called In and Out Burger. I'm not a fan of In and Out Burger. Everybody's oh. going crazy. I mean, I'd it's rather have Big Five like Guys. America. She's not. A I love food. it. What? She doesn't like the oh, listen. Speaking of food, the best food I had in Los Angeles. I know what. I do so. Stop it right now. That's none of your business. What I do is none of your business. She only eats kale and You know what? Both of you you stop it right now. I want to talk about a great restaurant in L.A. that I love. It is owned by my friend Richard Falzone, who is originally from Massachusetts. Then he lived in New York. He was in uh, Tony and Tina's with me. And now he lives in L.A. And he um, worked in this restaurant. Then he managed it. Then he bought it. 
Yeah. It's called Off Vine, O-F-F-V-I-N-E. It's on Leland Avenue, right, Michael? Yes. And where uh, is that? Would, would it be if, Leland Avenue if it was, because Vine is north and south, and Leland might be a street. Well, I know it's on Leland. I know that. It might because, be a street. Yeah. It might be a street. Maybe it's Leland yes. Street. Like around, uh, Michael, tell the people Offline. if they're in, if, yes. Is it by like Santa Monica, around that area? Santa yeah. Monica Boulevard, mm. or would be a, it's Fountain, right near Fountain. a big theater that's like was a famous theater. Pantages? Uh, like oh, I can't think of that it now. Probably Maybe that's it. Santa Monica Just look Boulevard. Google yeah. off vine. Santa Monica Boulevard. And we went there. We went when I was in LA and we went there for brunch. It's the oh, best right. brunch I've ever had in my life. And I, I've had a lot of brunch I can eat. Brunch. Yeah, we were at a star table sitting in the front. Oh my gosh. Because to to I know Richard. Let's shout out to Hanson's bakery in um in Kosher Canyon on uh, on um, what the hell? Well, Fairfax know. off of Olympic Hanson's Bakery where all the I don't know where that where is. all the famous get their cakes. Nicole Gothier, my cousin, just checked in. Uh, hi, Nicole. I saw Mike in earlier. Mike was on it. Did you know that Mike was watching the show? Uh, Mike's her boyfriend. Uh, she's wonderful. I love Nicole and her mom. And and uh, congratulations to Kathy Roberti, my cousin who just got married about a month ago. She, I love my cousins. I have the best family ever in Boston. They're great. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if your family's better than mine. You know what? I don't. I'm not <laughs> one to throw shade on anyone's family, but I've I've heard some stories. Mm. We're different. We come from different backgrounds. Different Italians Americas. are very different. Americans. Well, your family's from Kansas, right? Tell yes. me something. So it's a from whole Kansas. from Kansas. It's a whole different and culture. We didn't we didn't live in one of the Democrat counties. We lived in the, okay. You know. All right. So those are Sorry. your those are your that's your family. That's okay. That, I met your sister. She was actually very nice to me. I have four yeah. of those. We get we get along great. I got along great with your sister. Somebody told me we're all survivors of our childhood. Yes, and yeah. guess what else? You don't somebody your family. We all have yeah. had the same childhood, and that it's over. It's over, yes. and mm. it's time to move on. Mm. So Josie and uh, Valentino. Uh, she was a singer at uh, Don't Tell Mama's, amazing singer. Now she lives in Massachusetts. Uh, uh, Brendan Ryan is my friend. I salute you, sir. He is a captain. I love Brendan. Uh, Joey Maltese just joined, and he works at the Male Performing Arts Center, where I teach with Darius. And he is actually, I'm going to get him on the show with my friend uh, John Rodriguez. They both work at the theater, and they're going to be on the show in a, down the line. Next week on the show is um, Darius Frowner, oh, my no. co-teacher, my uh, partner in crime uh, in Piano Bar for many years. I actually work with Darius four times a week. Can you believe that? Darius so, has some depth. He really does. He's, he's, a he's an amazing teacher. Person. You cannot imagine how good this guy is. And he's my friend and um, and my work husband, I would say. And Kathy Roy Spees, who is my boss at Morristown, she's the director of uh, education and the best boss I have ever had in my life because mm. she works harder than anyone I know. And so she doesn't expect anything of you that she hasn't done 400 times over. So I'm going to be uh, doing a, my first on-location show next week. Please uh, keep your fingers crossed that it goes well because I, I'm going to have to bring my computers and all that stuff. So uh, I have to call Jimmy this week and work that out, see how we can do that. So thank you to uh, Armed Radio, Armed Digital Media. Thank you, Armed Radio. Yep, armeddigitalmedia.com. I have it on the Facebook. If you click on that, it will go directly to the show, and you can listen to it live every week. They have shows running on different nights. Just check in and, and listen to different shows. They have so much variety. And also, if you miss this show – you want to listen to it in podcast? It's Spreaker, S P R E A K E R dot com. Download that on your phone, your computer, and type in "What's the Story with Maria." Pour, put me on your favorites, and then you can. It's archived. This is show fourteen, so it'll probably wow. yes, fourteen episodes. Your first one. I know, and you were so sweet, and on the first one you I, were supportive. I told you I would come do it. You yeah. come do it, and then Michael, you both are going to have to come back. And talk about where you're at now, because I know you may be I'd doing a radio show, Michael. Soon, yeah, no, you, you've done a pilot, so you might. I've got a face for radio. That's what it is. <laughs> listen, <laughs> stop it, it right now. <laughs> no, listen. No time for any of that. <laughs> we need to prop ourselves up. Mm, so look yes. for Greg Schlotthauer. Uh, okay, it's, I think we gotta we gotta wrap it up. So we're gonna wrap it up. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Come back next Goodbye, week. Goodbye, everybody. 9 p.m. Eastern. We love you all. We love you. What's the story with Maria? Good night.